Hi guys, welcome to another audio video and I'll be reading Joshua 2 of the King James Version Bible and it reads and Joshua the son of Nun sent out of Shittim two men to spy secretly saying go view the land even Jericho and they went and came into the harlot's house named Rahab and lodged there and it was told the king of Jericho, saying, Behold, there came men in hither tonight of the children of Israel to search out the country. And the king of Jericho sent unto Rahab, saying, Bring forth the men that are come to thee, which are entered into thine house, for they be come to search out all the country. And the woman took the two men and hid them, and said thus, there came men unto me, but I wist not whence they were. And it came to pass, about the time of shutting of the gate, when it was dark, that the men went out, whither the men went, I wot not. Pursue after them quickly, for ye shall overtake them. But she had brought them up to the roof of the house, and hid them with the stalks of flax, which she had laid in order upon the roof and the men pursued after them the way to Jordan unto the fords and as soon as they and as soon as they which pursued after them were gone out they shut the gate and before they were laid down she came up unto them upon the roof and she said unto the men I know that the Lord hath given you the land and that your terror is fallen upon us and that all the inhabitants of the land faint because of you. For we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you when ye came out of Egypt, and what ye did unto the two kings of the Amorites that were on the other side of Jordan, Sion and Og, whom ye utterly destroyed. And as soon as we had heard these things, our hearts did melt, neither did there remain any more courage in any man because of you for the lord your god he is god in heaven above and in earth beneath now therefore i pray you swear unto me by the lord since i have shewed you kindness that ye will also shew kindness unto my father's house and give me a true token and that ye will save alive my father and my mother and my brethren and my sisters and all that they have and deliver our lives from death and the men answered her, Our life for yours, if ye utter not this our business. And it shall be, when the Lord hath given us the land, that we will deal kindly and truly with thee. Then she let them down by a cord through the window, for her house was upon the town wall, and she dwelt upon the wall. And she said unto them, Get you to the mountain, lest the pursuers meet you, and hide yourselves there three days until the pursuer be returned, and afterward may ye go your way. And the men said unto her, We will be blameless of this thine oath which thou hast made us swear. Behold, when we come into the land, thou shalt bind this line of scarlet thread in the window which thou didst let us stone by. And thou shalt bring thy father and thy mother and thy brethren and all thy father's household home unto thee. And it shall be that whosoever shall go out of the doors of thy house into the street, his blood shall be upon his head, and we will be guiltless. And whosoever shall be with thee in the house, his blood shall be on our head, if any hand be upon him. And if thou utter this or business, then we will be quit of thine oath, which thou hast made us to swear. And she said, According unto your words, so be it. And she sent them away, and they departed. And she bound the scarlet line in the window. And they went, and came unto the mountain, and abode there three days, until the pursuers were returned. And the pursuers saw them throughout all the way, but found them not. So the two men returned and descended from the mountain and passed over and came to Joshua the son of Nun and told him all things that befell them. 
And they said unto Joshua, Truly the Lord hath delivered into our hands all the land, for even all the inhabitants of the country do faint because of us. Alright guys, so in this chapter we see where Joshua actually sent forth men to scout the land, basically, as Moses had done in the past when they were supposed to go over into the land 40 years prior. But what happened was that this time the people were actually fearful. They were actually fearful because they, they did speak with them, right? And in the first going in of the men to scout the land, they did not speak to anyone, if you recall, right? They just went and they picked off the fruit, they viewed the land, and they went their way. So now they were discovered they went to scout and they were discovered and god softened the heart of the woman rahab and she actually hid the men the two men from the guards that the king sent the king of jericho had sent to take them in okay and we see where here we see a promise being made this is a promise basically against what God had said because he had said that he wanted everybody in the land, everybody in the land should be slain, right? That was God's words. However, God does honor the hearts of his children. We will recall that time and time again throughout the Bible where he does actually honor the oaths of his servants oaths made to others by his servants right if it is true if it is indeed a true and just oath and here it is that an oath has been made with rehab and her household basically right so we see that the city is fearful of the israelites because they know of god and they heard of what god had done to the king of Og to Og and Sion, not to the king of Og, to Og and Sion, the Amorite kings, two Amorite kings, right? And they're fearful and they heard how God actually parted the Red Sea so that they could cross over on dry land and who would not fear that? And if these people are faint in their hearts, just thinking, oh, these people are heading our way and their God is so mighty, why is it that? The children of Israel continually disregard God and not seem to recall his power and question him along the way. If people can just hear of the stories, they have not seen it with their eyes. How is it that people that have not seen with their own eyes but heard the stories can actually be faint hearted just hearing that those people are heading their ways, they haven't yet reached they haven't yet arrived at the destination, but they're fearful of them, right? Fear is instilled in their hearts, knowing that they're near by them. And these people don't fear God the way they ought to. The Israelites, that is the children of Israel, they question God time and time again. So that brings me to the fact that even leaders in our Christian community are questioned by believers within the church and it shows me how it is that outsiders and people that aren't really children of God per se they have not been Holy Ghost filled or water baptized can actually believe in what they see happening and the miracles they see God doing through his servants and we have people even within the Christian community who are still in disbelief of the things that they see happening and they're actually there. And these are the people that are reading the Bible and you have to think and wonder to yourself, how is it that these people who read their Bible, who supposedly know their Bible, right? And some of them can quote Bible to you, trust me, verbatim, they can quote everything in the Bible to you. And these are some of the people who are still this in disbelief of the power of God who still question God and his power 
and question the fact that God can take us through anything. So I'm going to ask you all to just examine yourselves at this point in time. Examine yourselves, okay? And ensure that when you examine yourself, you take away anything that is stopping you from believing in the power of God. Anything that lets you question or doubt the power of God. I want you to remove that from your life and see the change. And he'll actually tr start to use you and move through you. Because if you believe in him, there's nothing that you cannot do. Faith, faith can move mountains. Okay? It's something somewhat cliche, but it is so true. Without faith, you cannot do anything. Okay, and so we need to slay the doubt, get rid of the doubt, all the doubt that's clouded in our minds so that we can actually have total faith. Okay, all right, guys, so those are my few words for you. Guys, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification so you're alerted whenever a new audio video is posted. And guys, please don't forget to share your thoughts, your comments, and your revelations down below in the comment section. Have yourselves a blessed day. Bye.